Hello, my name is Allison, and this video is brought to you by the Math and Science Learning Center as part of the Quantitative Methods Lecture Series. In this video, I will show you how to set up a transshipment problem by hand. Uh, we will not actually be solving these problems, but uh, the skills you're learning here will help you set it up, and it will also be helpful with shortest root problems and just generally with linear programming. So let's jump into an example. A clothing company has factories in Denver and Atlanta, warehouses in Memphis and Boise, and stores in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. We know that each factory produces 1,600 items of clothing, and the stores receive 1,400 items, 700 items, and 1,100 items, respectively, per week. Uh, we know that the clothing has to be uh, has to go through the factories, then to the warehouses, then to the stores. This element is what makes it a transshipment problem because we have that stopping point at the warehouses in between. And we are given the cost of shipping items from uh, the factories to the warehouses and then the warehouses to the stores. So we aren't going to be solving this problem today, just setting it up. But Generally, when we have a transshipment problem or any sort of transportation problem, our goal is to minimize something. And in this case, because we're given the costs here, we are looking to minimize our cost of shipment. So let's keep that in mind as we set up a diagram to help us better understand this problem. So, as I mentioned before, we know that our clothing is going to be going from the factories to the warehouses, and then finally to the stores. Again, the fact that it stops off at the warehouses is what makes this particular thing a transshipment problem and not just a transportation problem. So first, it's going to start at Denver and Atlanta in the factories. So I'm going to create two nodes to represent these locations. So I've got a Denver node, and an Atlanta node. All right, those are going to be sent to Memphis and Boise, all of the inventory from those places. And then from Memphis and Boise, we are going to send to New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Now I have my nodes for my places, but I need branches to represent the pathways between them. So I know that I can send materials from Denver to Memphis, I can send them from Denver to Boise, and I can do the same for Atlanta to both of those places. I also know I can send from Memphis to any of my stores, so I want branches for those. And I also want branches from Boise to all of my stores. So this diagram represents our problem, right? Our transshipment of sending something from factories to warehouses and then warehouses to stores. I can finish it off by adding in these price elements. So we were told that each item of clothing is going to cost us this much as we send it between locations. So for instance, my um, cost from, for sending an item of clothing from Denver to Memphis is $4. So I can label that branch as 4, and I can do the same from Denver to Boise, it cost me $1. Right? So using the information from these tables, I can fill in the information that I have about cost for each of my branches. This is going to help us later as we determine our objective function. Great, so now we have a diagram, uh, a complete diagram representing our transshipment problem. Now our goal is to create a, an algebraic model that will help us uh, better understand what's going on here. So just like with a traditional linear programming problem, we have three steps. I need to figure out my decision variables, I need to set my objective, and I need to find out my constraints. So let's start with our decision variables. So in a transshipment problem, in the end, my goal is to determine how much of a certain thing I am sending along a certain pathway, right? So in this case, I'm talking about clothing items and I'm sending them from factories to warehouses, warehouses to stores. I need to know how much in the end I'm going to be sending from uh, Atlanta to Boise and how much I'm sending from Boise to Chicago, 
right? So for each of those, I need a decision variable. So my decision variables then in the end are representative of how much inventory I'm sending along a certain pathway. That means that each of these branches that I have here is going to have a decision variable associated with it. So the way I'm going to represent that is with an X. I'm going to take an X and then I'm going to have two subscripts. The first subscript is representative of where the thing came from. So in this case, it came from Denver and I'm sending it to Memphis. All right, and the same thing would be true for this one. I'd take an X, it's coming from Denver and it's going to Boise. And I can repeat this process for all of my little branches. So every single branch is going to get a decision variable associated with it that represents where the item came from and where it's being sent. Okay, so now we have all of our decision variables. We can use those decision variables that represent our inventory that's being sent along a certain pathway in our objective function. So as I've already mentioned, when we talk about transshipment problems, our goal is to minimize. Minimize something, sometimes it's distance, but in this case, we are going to minimize our cost. So that means that I need a function that represents the cost to my company. So we've already come up with our decision variables where it represents the inventory we're sending. Here I have all of my costs that were from our original charts that tell me how much it costs to send one item of clothing from one location to the other. So let's say for instance, um, I chose to send two items of clothing from Denver to Memphis. That means that it would cost me a total of $8 for that transaction. So I need a function that's going to help me gather up all of the costs from every single pathway. So I'll call it C. And I know let's start actually with our, our Denver to Memphis uh, branch. I know that it cost me $4 to send one item of clothing. Well, my decision variable represents all of the items of clothing that I'm sending along that pathway. So I'm going to multiply that by my decision variable for that branch. So if I want to represent uh, the cost of sending something from Denver to Boise, I know that it cost me $1 for one item of clothing. So I can put the one there or I can just put an X. That's fine too. And I put my decision variable. And I will continue this process, including the cost, and then multiplying it by its respective decision variable for every single one of my branches. Right? Because when we add all of these up, it'll represent all of the cost to me when I send all of my inventory. Okay, so now we've taken all of our costs and multiplied them by their respective pathways. When we add all of those up together, it will give us the total cost of shipping within a week. So the last step in setting up a transshipment problem is going to be finding our constraints. Previously, we know we had decision variables that rep were representative of our branches in this diagram. Right now our constraints are going to be representative of the flow of inventory at a node. Right? So that means all total, I'm going to have eight constraints for my problem, right? Because I need to have something that represents or an equation that represents how much is going out of Denver, how much is coming in and out of Boise, how much is going to Chicago and so on and so forth. So something to keep in mind with this particular problem uh, is that it is a balanced problem. How do I know that? That's because of our totals here. All right, so we were told on the very first slide that uh, Denver and Atlanta are producing 1,600 items of clothing each, meaning we have a total of 3,200 uh, items of clothing that are being produced. If we add up the totals of demand, 
for our New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles locations, they also add up to 3,200. So our supply from our factories is equal to the demand from our stores. Right? That means that we're going to have a balanced problem, which means that our constraints are all going to be equations rather than inequalities. If we had more supply than demand or more demand than supply, that would mean that some of our, some of our constraints might end up being inequalities. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are setting up a transshipment problem. So each node is going to get a constraint associated with it. So let's start with Denver and Atlanta. These two are going to look very similar as are uh, New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. So as I mentioned, uh, the constraints are representative of the flow of inventory at a certain location or at each node. So let's say I take Denver. I know that Denver can send items of clothing to Memphis and it can send items of clothing to Boise. So I have variables that represent those amounts that it's sending to Memphis and to Boise. Because my uh, supply is equal to my demand in the overall problem, I know that whatever, it send, whatever we send from Denver to Memphis and whatever we send from Denver to Boise need to add up to equal 1,600. And the same will be true for Atlanta. Whatever I send to Memphis and whatever I send to Boise need to add up to 1600. Right, so we're essentially balancing out the equation. We're saying this is how much I started with. Um, I have 1600 items of clothing and when I get done, I need all of that to have been sent somewhere. So now let's actually skip over Memphis and Boise. Let's come back to them. Let's go to New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles because they're going to look very similar. In the same way that Denver is saying, I started with 1600, this is how much I'm sending out. New York is going, I wanted 1400 items of clothing. I need that all to come from Memphis and Boise. So when it comes down to it, I need x sub mn plus x sub bn to equal 1400. All right, notice that what I'm essentially doing is picking all of the variables that have n as the second part, right? n as in the receiving position, adding them together and setting them equal to 1400. So I'll do the same thing with Chicago and Los Angeles with their respective demands. All right, so with Chicago, uh, I need to take into account the inventory from Memphis and Boise. So I go X sub M C plus X sub B C is equal to 700. And then lastly, the same thing with Los Angeles, just changing the second um, subscript to represent it's going to Los Angeles and it's going to be equal to 1100 based on its demand. Right, so you can see that all of those are pretty similar. This changes a little bit with Memphis and Boise. Because of the transshipment aspect, right, this is just a temporary stopping point in the middle. right? Um, inventory is getting sent to Memphis, but then they're immediately sending it out somewhere else. So I need to take that into account in my constraint. Firstly, I need to find all of the variables that are um, representative of inventory coming into Memphis. So that's going to be all of the ones that have an M in the second subscript position. So I know that X sub DM and X sub AM are all of the materials coming into Memphis. Now, when I add those together, that should equal all total my, my um, inventory at Memphis. But then all of that needs to be shipped out somewhere because we're in a balanced problem. So that needs to be equal to the amount that I am sending to New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. So I'm going to take all of the variables that have M in the starting position 
and add them up on the other side. Great, so now what this equation is saying is the amount that Memphis receives is also the amount that it will send out, right? Again, because we're in a balanced problem, I want the supply to be equal to the demand. Now we can leave it like this. That is a perfectly fine way to write a constraint. Generally though, we like it to sort of match these other ones and have a number on the other side. So I'm going to actually just bring everything on this side over to the other one by subtracting. So I'm going to take oop, and subtract away everything on this other side. I could have also subtracted the um, x sub dm and x sub am to the other side. It wouldn't have mattered. Right, just as long as you have one side subtracting away from the other and set it equal to zero, you've got your correct constraint. All right, and Boise is going to look the same. So I need to take into account that I've got inventory from Denver and inventory from Atlanta. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and skip to uh, this second version uh, for Boise. I'm going to subtract away everything that it's going to eventually send out to New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. So now you can see we have constraints for every single node that we have. These transshipment ones are just a little bit different where you have to take into account what's coming in and then what's going out. Great. And so now you can see a little bit cleaner version. Um, now we have our model set up. From here, you would be able to solve it by going in Excel and just setting it up in a very similar way to the way you, that you do with linear programming problems. Right? You'd have uh, a cell representing your objective function. You'd have cells representing your decision variables. You'd set up um, cells with your constraints, cells with the right-hand side of the constraints, um, and then use solver to, to figure out how much you are sending along each pathway. Right, so this is the foundation for understanding transshipment problems. Um, if you do still have any questions about this setup or even about uh, solving these kinds of problems, please stop by the Math and Science Learning Center and a tutor should be able to help you there.